Connecting you to top evangelical scholars discussing the important theological issues of our day. This is Converse with Scholars. Here to introduce the guest for this edition is Michael Patton. Uh, I am Michael Patton. I am joined tonight by nobody, as you can see. Uh, Rome Dyke is not here, uh, and uh, Ed Komoshevsky's uh, computer is still having problems whenever we get on Pal Talk to where you just can't hear him very well, but he doesn't have that much good stuff to say like I do anyway, so that's good. Uh, I am a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary, so is Rome, and so is Ed Komoshevsky, the directors in the program. Now let's get to away from us and towards our special guest. We have a very special guest. Uh, this is the second time that we have had this guest. He is the author and professor, Dr. J.P. Moreland. He holds degrees in philosophy, theology, and chemistry. Uh, Dr. Moreland has taught theology and philosophy at several schools throughout the U.S. He has authored and co-authored many books that you're probably familiar with, a lot of them, including Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview, uh, Christianity and the Nature of Science, Scaling the Secular City, an apologetics book, one that I highly suggest everybody have, Does God Exist, uh, Immortality, the Other Side of Death, uh, The Life and Death Debate, Moral Issues of Our Time, I could go on and on. Last time we had him talking about his book, Love Your God with All Your Mind, and that is an excellent book, part of the inspiration for this ministry. Uh, his work appears in many journals, such as Christianity Today, Journal of the Evangelical Theological Society, uh, Philosophy and F uh, Phenomenological Research, the American Philosophical Quarterly, and he has served also at Campus Crusade for Christ for 10 years, planted two churches and spoken at over 200 colleges, and that was a year ago, so it's probably gone up quite a bit more. We're going to uh, talk to him about a book called Kingdom Triangle. And before we jump in and talk about that book, I want to just ask Dr. Moreland to uh, come on and maybe tell us a little bit about himself. Uh, I think last time we asked you to tell us a little bit about yourself that maybe other people didn't know. Let's see if we can get something else about yourself that maybe other people don't know. Um, can, can you hear me now on the mic? Um, okay, good. Um, Thank you, Michael, for uh, what you what you said <laughs> by way of introduction. I really appreciated it. Uh, a little overinflated, perhaps. Uh, I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, uh, chemistry major in college. Came to Christ uh, through Campus Crusade uh, in uh, college, and then joined Campus Crusade staff and uh, planted a couple of Crusade ministries in the state of Vermont and one in Western Colorado, and then went to Dallas Seminary. Uh, rejoined Crusade to teach at a seminary uh, in Southern California, and then took an MA and PhD in philosophy, where I was very deeply influenced by the by the life and writings of Dallas Willard. And uh, I've uh, been teaching at Talbot uh, Seminary now for 17 years. I've been in the ministry 37 years, and uh, I have two daughters uh, that are both pregnant. They're both married and uh, live in Seattle and Pittsburgh. One is due with a little girl in three weeks, and the other's due with a little boy. Uh, in September, so I'm going to be a grandpa coming up here pretty soon, and I'm excited about that. Okay, sorry about that. I couldn't get my mic to work that time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Moreland. L let's see here. I, I'm going to ask, l let's just jump right into the subject of tonight, the uh, book that you have written. And I want to kind of just let you take uh, take the driver's seat on a lot of this, although I got quite a few questions here. But let let's just start off with this. I think you have suggested this. I'm not sure where I heard it, Dr. Moreland, but um, uh, somebody has said that you have you said that this may be your most important work. Is that true? And if it is true, why? I, I think it is the most important book I've written, uh, Michael, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, like I said earlier, I've been in the ministry now for 37 years, and I've I've done practically everything from working with children to being a youth director. To, <laughs> campus evangelism and, and teaching. And uh, Kingdom Triangle really uh, represents uh, my reflection back over 37 years of full-time Christian work. And uh, it's, it really is my manifesto to the church. It, it's, the, it's the book that I would like to sit down with a pastor or a Christian uh, leader or, or if I had a chance to, to speak in a church. Uh, the, the content of Kingdom Triangle is what I would really like to get on the table and, and encourage them to consider. 
uh, the, the second, so the first reason is because it really, uh, I believe, represents uh, a long time of reflection on some pretty important issues. I think secondly, the book is, uh, is, is readable to a broad audience. Uh, as you may know, I've written books that were a bit more technical, and I wrote this intentionally so it could be read by a thoughtful reader that, that uh, would be willing to do a little bit work, uh, a little bit of work, but I, I do think it's readable. And, and then third, uh, I think that, that my diagnosis of the culture and, and my equipping of Christians to have more courage and more confidence in speaking out into the cultural chaos around us, and then the course that I chart uh, for the future with the three legs of the Kingdom Triangle, I think, are, are balanced and, and really answer to a need. So th those are some of the reasons why I guess I would say it's, it, it, at least in my estimation, the most important thing that I feel like I've written. Well, this may be a big question, and I don't want to take up all your time simply because this is going to be what we're diving into th for the rest of the broadcast. But um, your book, Kingdom Triangle, um, can you give us a brief overview of what it is about, and then we'll dig a little bit deeper into the particulars? Yeah, the first half of the book is uh, a diagnosis of the debates going on in American culture at the level of worldview. Uh, at the beginning of the book, I try to say that, that, that what's lying at the, beneath the surface of the political and ethical debates is a fundamental contest about worldviews. And I, I claim that there are three worldviews, naturalism, postmodernism, and Christianity, that are really struggling for the hearts and minds of people. And I provide a critique of naturalism and postmodernism. And I try to show how these worldviews have shifted the culture in a whole host of directions. So that the goal of that first half of the book, Michael, is, is, is the reader would walk away feeling like he or she had a much deeper understanding of what was really going on and why things were happening the way they were. And then secondly, would be emboldened, would have more of a sense of empowerment, of competence, and, and courage to speak out. Second half of the book, <clears throat> I, I, I go back to the book of Acts and to the early church, the, the first three and a half centuries of the church, and I, I believe that, the th that there were three general areas that, 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 that the church emphasized in its ministry, and I think that should be components of a healthy Christian life and a healthy local church, and that's the recovery of, of theology as a source of knowledge and not merely true belief. So along those lines goes with the Christian mind. Secondly, a recovery of, of the formation of a tender heart and an inner life, spiritual formation, uh, that sort of thing. And then third is a recovery of the power of the kingdom and the power of the spirit uh, through uh, learning to be naturally supernatural. So those are the three uh, areas that I direct uh, for the future. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that's a big question. Now, let's, uh, I, I know you mentioned this beforehand, but, you know, we talk about these theology books. We talk about a book called Kingdom Triangle, Recover the Christian Mind, Renovate the Soul, Restore the Spirit's Power, and we can talk about your other books that you have written. This book, you said, is uh, more broad in its audience base. Are, are you talking broad in the sense of, of the uh, stay-at-home mom, the 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 busy uh, father who is uh, working hard doesn't really have that much knowledge in these types of things. Can they pick this book up and find benefit out of it? Yes, they can. Um, the uh, chapter two and three, uh, and part of chapter four would be a little difficult, but the rest of the book would be very readable uh, for someone like that. And even the more difficult parts, I think, are accessible for the most part. The feedback I'm getting from people is precisely that. And I've kind of sampled it with some folks that I think would fit in the category that you've, uh, you've, you've accurately identified. And those people are saying, well, it was tough in a few places, but I hung in there and I got a lot out of it, especially in the other parts of the book, but I even got something in those harder places. So yeah, I, I do think it's accessible. Well, it was nice, too, as I was reading through it. You, you warned us as that was coming. You warned and you said these, these next couple of chapters will be a little bit more difficult, but just hang with us, and, and that, that helps. Uh, that is always helpful. So um, thank you for doing that.